Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this wonderful day. This is Kathy Zerler outside in the spring, and it's glorious. We're about to begin restorative yoga. So let's lie down on our mat in rest pose, whatever that is for you. And so it could be corpse pose where I am. Or if you have any feeling or twitching or any sensation at all in your low back, try this. Bend your knees, place your feet on the edges of the width of your mat, and then let your knees fall together. And this takes the pressure off your lower back. And the other alternative to rest pose traditionally would be reclining cobbler with the soles of your feet together. But if none of these work for you, let's say you just want to have one leg straight out and the other leg bent, that's fine. Get in a position that allows you to completely let go of everything and begin to breathe. Inhaling and exhaling, healing oxygen coming in, CO2 going out, which benefits the plants that are all around us. And let yourself completely relax and let go of anything on your mind, anything heavy on your heart. You can pick all those things up later. But for now, this is your yoga. This is for you. Do what's right for you. And most importantly, be safe. Do not do anything that I might suggest that you don't think you should do. Just don't do it. It's perfectly okay. There's so many ways to practice yoga. And there's so many poses. We don't have to feel pressured to do each one in the same way other people do. And so now begin to turn your head slowly from side to side, warming up your neck. And as you move from left to right and right to left, acknowledge center. When your head comes straight up toward the sky, think center. And this helps remind every cell in your body of the value of balance. And the next time you come to center, adjust your shoulders, roll the mat so your shoulders are squarely on the mat, and then turn your head to the right and go all the way up to your range of motion on the right side and hold it there up to your range of motion never through. It should feel like you're at your limit and you're not hurting or feeling anything even approaching pain. Breathe back to center. Turn the other way. Same thing on this side. Allow yourself the luxury of noticing where you are, how you are, right now, this very moment. Breathe back to center. Turn again to the right side. Hold it and breathe. Breathe back to center. Go the other way, last time. Hold it, breathe into it. So we like to breathe into the body parts that we are working. We like to direct our breath with our minds into that body part. Breathe back to center. Lift up both arms just off the floor, not very high, so that the shoulders, the elbows, the hands are all up off the mat, and you're holding their weight, and you are breathing. Now engage 
your low abs. Engage the low core. These are the TVA muscles right below your navel. Squeeze those muscles and then squeeze your hips, squeeze your glutes. And then just release all of that and keep your abdominal core engaged, holding up this weight. Breathing as you hold. Always breathe. When we hold, we do not hold our breath. And now all at once, drop the arms and let everything melt. Just let go. And smile. You are at the start of a new practice. One more time. Lift the arms up just off the mat. Hold the weight, engage the low core. Engage it as much as you'd like. You can do the whole thing. Abs, glutes, hips, even the quadriceps. You can do that whole thing if you want to. It's a great exercise for core strength. But the arms only really require part of this. So do what you want. Do what you want to feel safe but not stressed. And now all at once, release it all. Let it all go. Bring your arms up toward the sky and press your fingers toward the sky. Feel your shoulders extending. Keeping your shoulders on the mat, keeping the back of your head and the other body parts that are on the mat, keep them there. And just reach for the sky. And now soften here. Fold your hands, turn your palms up toward the sky, and hold it here. Release. Make a steeple, touch your thumbs, and bring your hands down into prayer pose, allowing your, the sides of your thumbs to rest in the center of your chest applying gentle pressure to the xiphoid process. Let your arms rest on your chest. Breathe and soften and notice how good this feels. As you take a moment to set your intention for your practice today, what do you want? Why are you here? Bring both arms behind you on the mat and stretch through the fingers and the toes. Point the feet, widen the fingers, feel the length and the strength of stretching, flexing, making space. You're making space now between every vertebrae, among all the bones, around all the organs. And now bring your arms back next to your body. Bend the right knee. Bring the right leg up close, placing both hands behind that knee as you massage the right side of your body with the top of your leg. Breathing in, breathing out, and noticing. You are massaging the low core. And when you press in with your leg, you can feel your back, the small of your back, getting a cushion against the mat. And now coming to center, lift up the right leg, the knee is soft. Place both hands on the TVA muscles right below your navel. Engage the core and point the right foot, very slowly lower the right leg almost to the floor. And when you get almost to the mat, flex your foot and bring it up just as slowly 
So you are exerting in both directions and keep going at your own pace. Keep breathing the way it feels best for you. Pointing it down, flexing it up, and breathing in both directions. Because we are exerting in both directions. So in weightlifting, we're taught to breathe on the exertion or to exhale on the exertion. We don't do that in yoga. We breathe into every move we make in whatever breath feels right to us. The important thing is to continue engaging the healing oxygen and the CO2. And the next time your foot comes close to the floor, release and relax. Let everything know. Spirit, mind, and body are all in this with you. This is not only your body. This is your spirit and your mind, all working together. Bend the left knee. Bring the left leg up close, placing both hands behind that knee as you massage the left side of your body with the top of your leg. Feeling good. Notice you. You are giving yourself a massage and you have everything you need within you to take care of yourself. Bring the left leg up in the air. The knee is soft. Place your hands on the TVA muscles. Engage your shoulders. Always check your shoulders. It's important that your neck is safe. As you point and very slowly, lower the left leg almost to the floor. Using the core, when you arrive almost to the floor, flex your foot and bring it up just as slowly. Yes, the leg is moving, but the core is doing the work. We need to strengthen our core, which is all, fitness is all about core strength. The core actually is the entire torso, the trunk. But when we speak about core, mostly in fitness, we do mean the low abdominal core. The next time your left leg comes close to the floor, breathe it down. Don't hurry ever. Take your time. This is your practice. And when you get close to the floor, let everything go. Drop it. Soften. Bend your knees now and roll onto one side using your elbow and your hand, the other hand, to push yourself up to a seated position. Whatever seat you want for now. I like staff pose. So here I am in staff pose with my legs straight out. Pull the fleshy part back if you have it. Feel the sits bones, which a nurse would call ischial tuberosity. Lengthen your spine, so sit tall. And then bring your arms out to the side, out to parallel. Palms are down. Small pats of the air, moving the shoulders with gentle pulses, patting the air, warming up the shoulders. Stop. Turn your palms up, gently lift the air. The shoulders are an amazing piece of anatomy. They go in all different directions, up and down, front and back, rotating. And stop, release, roll your shoulders. So this is something I do many times every day because I, I, we're, and all of us are doing this, not just me. We're on the keyboard. We're setting the table. We're making the bed. Um, we're playing with our electronic devices. We're looking down. And so it's important to contraindicate that forward motion with a backwards shoulder roll on a regular basis. Bring your arms up overhead, lift up, 
Lift up right out of the floor as if you're trying to levitate. Squeeze the hips. Soften right here. Hold your hands, palms up toward the sky. Lift up again, pull in the abs. Soften right here. Bring your arms down to parallel, palms forward, small circles backwards. Moving from the core all the way out to the fingertips. Working the shoulders and yes, the arms are moving and they're doing some of the work, but we want the bigger muscles of the body to do more. Stop, small circles forward. Sit tall, keep breathing. Notice what you're doing. Keep your eye on what you are doing. Release the arms. Roll back the shoulders. This is mindful movement. You are watching what you're doing with your mind's eye. You are realizing because you're moving slowly when you get to your limit, your edge. When you get to your ex full extension in range of motion, wherever that is right now, you will notice that because you're moving slowly and mindfully. You are controlling all of this with your heart. You are doing the right things for yourself. Let's sweep our arms up into goalposts. Small movements, bring the shoulders back, bring the chin back, and notice. And breathe. And smile, why not? And then stop and bring your hands down into scarecrow, small movements. Smile again. And then swing the arms. And why not? Have fun. Life is short. We're only here for the time it takes a snowflake to fall in real time. Roll back your shoulders and put your hands behind your hips. And then get on the heels of your feet and lift up the weight of your body. Now you only have to go this far, but if you'd like, you don't have to go anywhere if you don't want to. You can lift it up and tuck your chin and make your body a plank. Or you can arch your back and let your head come back behind you. Any one of these three or none. Do what's right for you. Bring up your head. Come back down slowly. Adjust your seat, roll back your shoulders, and softly fold forward. Fold in half. Let your head come toward your knees, hands toward the feet. Release and relax. Roll it up. One beautiful bone at a time. Roll back your shoulders. Bend the right knee. Bring the right leg up and place the right foot on the outside of the left knee. Now bring the right arm to the inside of the right leg and bring your left arm back. So it's sitting behind you on the mat. Begin to twist from the waist, looking over the left shoulder. Point the left foot. This is a full body spinal rotation. We're going to get as much out of this as we can. And we're going to do that by pointing the foot and then gently, mindfully arching your back, lifting your chin, Lifting up your lips in a smile and breathe. Breathe into your flexing spine. Here in this pose, our spines, our neck, our shoulders, really our entire body is all working together. This is a wonderful exercise for golfers. These are those crazy muscles that golfers put all together when they take a proper swing. And so these are great warm-ups for people who like to golf. These spinal rotations. Soften in place, 
Let yourself move because your body knows. And listen to your body right now. See if it wants to go in a better place. And then when you're ready, return to the tension of pointing the foot, lifting the chin, squeezing the core, arching your back, and then releasing everything you can in just all around the pose so that you're using enough muscles to hold the pose, let your body memorize this flexion, but you're not overusing. You're not going to the extreme. You're using enough energy, but you're not using yourself up. And I think that's the difference between longevity and other options. Move slowly and mindfully. Use what you need to do what you'd like to do. Slowly unwind, coming back. Coming back. For me, it's staff pose. Well, for you, it is too now. You're in staff pose. Fold in half. Seated forward bend. Roll up. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Shoulders roll back. Hands behind the hips. Lift up. You only have to go a little, just enough to hold up the weight of your body, or you can point the feet, tuck the chin, and make a plank, or you can arch your back and look behind you. Bring up your head carefully, never to injure the neck. Come down slowly. Shake out your wrists. So the head weighs an average of 10 pounds. So we want to be careful with our necks because the neck is one of the more delicate parts of our bodies. All right. Let's now come to all fours to the table. And let's extend the right leg back so the right foot is on the floor. It can stay here. Or you can lift it up to parallel. And now your hands can stay on the mat. Or you can extend them. You can extend the left arm. And breathe. Come back, come back to the table, take a moment at center, extend the left leg. The foot can stay on the mat, or you can lift up the left leg to parallel. Hands can stay on the mat, or you can extend the right arm. Breathe into it. Come back to the table. Bend the right knee now and let the right foot flex toward the sky and begin flexing the right hip up and down. Squeeze that side of your core. Small movement, it's a pulsing movement. Bring that leg down. Same thing, find your center. Lift up the left leg, flex that foot toward the sky, and lift up, up and down, nice and slow. Come back down, and then move your feet to the edges of the width of your mat and your hands to the edges of the width of your mat for downward facing dog and push up into down dog. Find your spot. Arch your belly toward the mat. Let your head hang between your arms. Breathe and release and notice and press your hip 
Oops, back. And now begin to pedal, bending first one knee and then the other, using the muscles that are required and using them enough. Come back to center. Walk your hands and feet together to forward bend. Tucking the chin, pulling in the belly, very slowly roll up. So we've been on the mat for a while here. And we need to let that blood flow back from our brain to our heart. Sweep your arms up, lift up. Soften right here, release your arms, come into your mountain. So your mountain, legs are straight down from the hips, feet are forward, roll back your shoulders. Arms are by your side, your chin is back. Soften here and close your eyes if you're able to. Allow every cell in your body to memorize balance and good posture. Just take a moment right here. Do this many times a day. Come into good posture. We don't do it all the time, we can't. We're doing all kinds of things in our lives. But we need to come to good posture many times every day because posture, good posture, a straight spine, uh, well, a tall spine. Our spines really aren't straight, they have a curve, but you know what I mean. All right, so all the biggies in fitness and research, Mayo Clinic, Johns Hopkins, Cleveland Clinic, you know, um, Mayo Clinic, every one of them has said, the single best thing we can do for a healthy spine is be in good posture. That's pretty simple. And it's not invasive and it feels pretty good. So let's do some forward bends. I'm going to turn to the side. Bring your elbows in closely to your waist. Sit way back as you bend your knees. So you want your knees above your feet. And then fold in half, let your hands come to the mat. Allow your head to hang between your arms and shake your head yes. Releasing the crystals that are in your head, in your skull, and if they get clustered together, they can cause dizziness. So this helps alleviate that. Tuck the chin now, pull in the belly, and begin to slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time allowing that blood to flow back to your heart. Shoulders roll back. Sweep your arms up, lift up, lengthen. Soften right here. Bring your arms back down and allow yourself to sway from side to side. Just nice and gentle from the mountain. Check your feet, make sure they're forward. Make sure you feel like you're sturdy on your foothills, like you're grounded on your mat. And then come back to center, re roll back the shoulders, elbows in, forward bend. Sit way back. Bend the knees, fold in half, hang out, touch the floor. It is important to have all points on the floor. And so if you cannot touch the mat, a block or something else, a pile of books, might be useful for you. But I do think for stability, I have to highly recommend four points on the mat. Slowly tuck the chin and begin to roll up one beautiful bone at a time. As your head comes up, notice the blood flowing from your brain to your heart. Shoulders roll back. Sweep up, lift up, arch your back, and look up. 
Bring up your head now and gently sway from side to side. You are like a tree in the breeze. You are swaying gently. If one of your shoulders doesn't feel like doing this, then just sway your body from side to side or do it with one arm. Always honor your body wherever it is. You are under no obligation to go into pain. Come back to center. In fact, you'd be crazy to go into pain, right? Lift up, soften here and release and roll back the shoulders. Hands on the waist, knees are soft, twist to the right, looking over the right shoulder. Breathe back to center. Again, great pose for golfers, twist to the left, and people who drive cars. We need to check on the people that are behind us, maybe in our blind spot. So this is pretty important. Breathe back to center. Twist to the right. Look over the right shoulder. Come back to center. And last time, twist left. Come back to center. Release the arms and gently release by swaying. Tension plus relaxation equals healing. Come to your mountain. Elbows in for forward bend. Sit way back. Bend your knees, fold in half. Touch the mat or a block or something around your house. And shake your head yes. Hugging the chin, pulling in the belly. Roll up forward. One beautiful bone at a time. As your head comes up and your shoulders roll back, sweep your arms up, lift up. Lengthen here, soften, gently arch your back and look up and lean back just a little. Bring up your head. Release your arms and bring your hands behind you. Fold your hands and then gently bring your arms away from your backside so that you can engage your shoulders a little bit more. Once again, contraindicating the way our shoulders usually are going. Chin is back. Release the arms. Step out a little bit for tripod. So tripod is exactly what it sounds like. You're gonna put both hands in front of you on the mat. So here's two legs of the tripod and let's fold in half and put your palms together on the mat so you're in a triangle. Keep your knees a little soft and let your head hang right now between your arms. As you walk both hands over to the right foot, left hand stays on the mat. Sweep up the right arm and look up. Look down. Right arm down. Walk back to center. Both hands to the left foot. Right hand on the mat. Left arm up in the air. Look up. Look down. Left arm down, walk back to center. Both hands to the right foot, left hand on the mat. Right arm up in the air, look up. Look down, right arm down, walk back to center. Both hands to the left foot, right hand on the mat. Left arm up in the air, look up. 
look down. Left arm down. Walk both hands back to center. Stay here. Take a moment. And now from here, if you would like to, walk your feet out a little farther to stretch out your center. And if you'd like to really go a little bit farther, then you can come down to your forearms, or you can just stay up on your hands. And let that center stretch. Come back up. Walk your feet together. And roll up to forward bend. I mean, roll up to the mountain. Excuse me, we'll do another forward bend to release and relax. And by the way, the forward bend is an overall, sweep it up, excellent. If you had to pick one, the forward bend with some of these variations would be the one. Or maybe good posture. Or maybe a lot more of them too. But they all work. Release. Forward bend, elbows in, sit way back, bend the knees, fold in half, hang out, and shake your head yes. Tucking the chin, come up nice and slow, up to the mountain, to Dasana, shoulders roll back. Sweep up your arms, lift up, lengthen, and then lean in crescent moon. Now, the hand that's by your side is there for stability. The other arm sure feels best. This is the most traditional, but if you'd rather have your shoulder and your arm across your body, do that. Maybe you'd like to have your hand on your waist. Maybe you'd like to just have your arm behind you. Do what's right for you. Let's come back up. Lengthen at center. Soften and lean the opposite direction. Pick the spot where your upper arm wants to be depending on how that shoulder feels. And the other arm is down the side of your body and you are stable. We are stretching out the oblique muscles here. Come all the way back up. Lengthen at center, soften. One more time in this direction and then we'll go the other way too because in yoga, we always do both sides as much as possible equally. And that depends on where we are from day to day at any given time. And that's up to you. That's mindfulness. Come all the way back up. Lift up at center. Soften, lean the other way. Lift up your lips in a smile. I wish I could see each one of you smiling. Come all the way back up. Lift up and center. Soften, release, roll the shoulders. And let's step out now into the five point star. Back is straight. Arms are parallel, knees are soft, and you are stable. Intensify everything below the neck, squeeze it all. Squeeze it all together and be mindful of your posture. And then soften. Turn, it would be your left foot, that direction. Sink the back heel. Bring your left arm up in the air, legs are straight and the right arm goes down the back of the right leg as you look up. Balance in motion. Bring up your head, bring your arms back to parallel, swivel your hips toward the front, sink the forward knee, 
being sure you can see the top of your foot, and then bring the forward arm on top of that leg, side angle pose, and bring the other arm up overhead. Hold it here. Come back up nice and slow. Keep the forward knee back. Check yourself. You know, if you're allowed to move, you can see me moving in and out of these poses. You are allowed to adjust anytime you want. And so make, make use of that because there's a, a sweet spot in every pose. Bring both arms together in the front. Straight spine, strong fists, and pull. Come back slowly like you're shooting a bow and arrow. And when you get about to your mouth, release. Hold it here. Again, both arms together in the front. Strong fists and pull. Bring it back. Lots of energy. Tense up everything. And then let go of everything except what you need to stay up. And hold it here. Again, both arms together in the front. Straight spine, strong fist, pull. This is a heavy bow and arrow. You are up for it. You are a peaceful warrior doing the right things. Release. Hold it here. Bring both arms together in the front, palms facing each other. Lift your arms up overhead. Arch your back and look up. Bring up your head, lower the arms, come back to center, find the five point star, intensify, release, step together, and just relax. Just, you know, pretend you're Elaine Bennis on Seinfeld, you know, that series of famous things where she was dancing, and it wasn't pretty, but it's useful. Come back to your mountain. Step out to the five point star. Soften in, find your spot. Palms are down, arms are parallel to the floor, knees are soft. Intensify, squeeze everything below the neck. Breathe into it, release. Turn your right foot to the right. Sink the back heel. Bring your right arm up in the air, legs are straight, and the other arm goes down the back of that leg, and you look up. Balance in motion. Bring up your head, bring the arms back to parallel. Sink the forward knee, being sure you can see the top of your foot, side angle pose, as the other arm comes up overhead, or, again, wherever your shoulder feels good, maybe it feels good here, wherever it feels good, and hold this pose. Keeping the forward knee bent, come back up, check yourself at center, sink into it. It's almost like sinking the hips a little bit. Bring both arms together in the front. Strong fists and pull. Bring your left arm back like you're shooting a bow and arrow. And then release. Hold it here, straight spine. Again, both arms together in the front. Strong fists and pull, bring it back. Slow, and at about your mouth, let go. Hold it here. Again, both arms together in the front. Strong fists. You are strong as you pull back, and you are gaining endurance. Let it go. You are a gentle giant. Bring both arms together in the front, palms facing each other. Lift your arms up overhead, arch your back and look up. Bring up your head, lower the arms, come back to center. Intensify. Hold it and then release and step together and let's sit down. So we're about to wind down here. 
And we're going to do that in a couple of ways. One is what I like to call my signature move, which I learned from a physical therapist. And it's just a good, strong yin pose that helps us to bring it all together and make it work a little better. And so roll onto your back. One hand behind each knee and roll on your back, stimulating blood flow around your spine. Feeling good. Bring the knees in close. Arms out into airplane. Lower both legs to the right, allowing them to go all the way to the mat. So your hips and spine follow. Turn your head to the left, extending the left arm, and roll that palm up. Right palm is down. You are in the pose. This is a full body spinal rotation. I call it the chiropractic pose of yoga. It is the pose that if you have something minor out of place in your spine, this is the pose that can articulate it back in place. Very non-invasively, very gently. So settle in here. Allow yourself to relax into this. We're gonna be here for a couple minutes, maybe, well, maybe not. I'll not, we're not getting right out of this, so I don't want you to be poised to come out. So let's, let's definitely take maybe at least a minute to rest in and soften. This pose, I had a gentleman in my yoga class about two years ago who came in for the first time with his wife. And he came up to me after class, so we, were, we had done this pose, which I like to do at the end. And he said he had had a pinched sciatic nerve for 20 years, and he released it that day. I mean, that's not typical. You know how, if you look at diet things, they always show these people that turn from a fat person to a supermodel, and then they say, not typical results. I can't claim that's typical, but it, it, it happened. And this day was just, he was so pleased and so grateful and he never missed a class until he had to move away. So, keep the faith, everybody. It all works out. And while I'm on the subject of making things work out, yoga is a practice, like baseball or playing the piano or anything worth doing. And so you need to do it. If it was a magic bullet or a pill I could give you, I'd give it to you. But you have to do it. And you have to do it at your own pace on a regular basis. So let's bring very slowly one leg up at a time and bring in the arms, one hand behind each knee as you roll on your back. Bringing your spine back to center, stimulating blood flow, and really go a little bit more vigorously than we did before. And there's another way to do this. If you like happy baby, you can bring your legs up in the air. You can grab the soles of your feet and you can roll around like that. Like a child who just discovered his or her feet. So glory. Bring the knees in close, arms out into airplane, legs to the left, all the way to the mat, head to the right, extend the right arm so the right palm goes up, left palm is down, you're looking to the right and you're letting go. Begin to systematically soften and sink into this pose. Let it go.
Release a little more. Find that sweet spot in every pose. You are allowed to move. Very slowly, one leg at a time. Bring up your legs. Bring in your arms. One hand behind each knee. And I say that because it prevents overflexing of the knee joint. I say it all the time. And so roll on your back. Stimulating the blood flow around your spine. And then extend your legs, bring both arms up overhead, behind you on the floor. Push through the fingers and the toes. Soften right here, bring your arms back and come into rest pose. If you have a blanket and an eye mask, this would be a great time to put them on. Otherwise, just close your eyes and settle in. And I'm going to tell you a story, a guided meditation. Imagine that you are in a garden. All around you, birds are singing. There's their individual distinctive tweets and chirps and peeps, and even the cat call of the cat bird. And they are in the trees, and the green leaves in various myriad hues of green are waving gently in the breeze. The air around you ruffles your hair, caresses your skin. You can feel the sun warming your back. And in that garden, there are many colorful flowers. The fragrance of the flowers, the fragrance of the moist earth after a rain, the colors all blend together to give you an experience of coming together with nature. And right now, Shavasana, which is what we call rest pose, brings together, integrates our spirits, our minds, and our bodies all together. After we've done this work that's physical, but bringing our spirits into it, bringing our minds very closely into it. And now we're back all together. Feel the peace. Feel the peace that you have from gentle, safe, non-invasive exercise. It is a lifestyle. Yoga is a lifestyle. It is not a religion. It is something we do simply because we feel better when we do it. And as we close, bring your hands together in prayer pose. And as we end traditionally in yoga, we say the word namaste, which literally means I bow to you and you bow to me, which many people in the world use as a greeting. But it also means I recognize your sweet spirit. And I recognize my own sweet spirit. And we recognize that in each other. And we look for the good. And so we say together, Namaste. Make it a healthy day, everybody. Thank you for coming. Come back.